So today I'm going to be doing a how-to video for just regular maintenance uh, on a 2004 RV. This one just happens to be a Itasca Spirit. It's a Ford E450 Super Duty. Like I said, it's a 2004 6.8 liter V10. Um, and I'm going to be changing out the air filter and 10 of the spark plugs as well as 10 of the ignition coils. I'm going to go through the steps you take to be able to remove everything and switch it all out. These are going to be the parts that I'm using today. Um, this is going to be the air filter. I just got this offline. I think it was about 10 or 12 bucks for this model. These are going to be the 10 spark plugs. I'm going to be using some dielectrode grease um, in the ignition coils that I'm switching out. So this is what they look like. I got nine more in this box here. And for this particular model, um, I'm going to show you how to access the engine compartment, uh, which is pretty basic. Um, it just consists of moving the console here, which just um, simply, you just raise in here, lift straight up, and remove it. And then to be able to actually see the engine compartment, you just need to remove four latches. One of them is going to be on the side here. One down here, and then two on the opposite side. And I'll show you what that looks like behind it. So this is what it looks like once you take the cover off, which is very easy. It's just those four clips and trying to uh, kind of wiggle it out. Um, so what I'm going to be changing out is the spark plugs and the ignition coils as you can see uh, on this side. So there's five on each side. This is one ignition coil here. The second one is gonna be right here. Third one here. And then just goes further down. I'll get some better lighting to show you. Then looking on the opposite side. They're all in a row right along there and you can see the first one. And before we take out the spark plugs, I'm going to change out the air filter, which will also give you better access to the spark plugs on the front end side of the vehicle. So how to do that, I just need to remove this bezel here, remove the air intake, and this as well. So it's just going to be um, four screws along here and then these are 5 sixteenths um, you're gonna need a 5 sixteenths socket for this there's gonna be just four as well as back here and then removing this here to be able to um, disconnect this um, air intake hose from this They just come right off. Just put them in the same bag and I'll show you um, how easy it is to just remove the bezel here. And there's two clips in here, as you can see. And this comes right off. There is the air filter here. and it's pretty well filled and so easy to change once that's then removed you can then take this off 
And I also removed the plug here, which connects to this in the back. Once you've done that, then you can access the two of the front plugs a little bit better. I'll get a light and show you where the top of the ignition coil is. So to get even better access, I'm going to also be removing this hose here, which there is a screw right there to loosen it. So I just removed that screw and I was able to take it off. It's just a smaller portion there with a, a set screw on it. So now you can see a lot better. So I'm also going to be removing the shroud here that kind of keeps in place the main electrical wiring. To do that, I'm going to be removing that screw there, which is 13 millimeters. And there's another screw in the front that I'll show you. That's going to be 15 sixteenths millimeters, or sorry, 15 sixteenths. And then on this side as well, there's gonna be one in the front, which is right there. And then that's 15 or 5 sixteenths. And then there's one in the front as well. And this screw here is gonna be 5 sixteenths. Already kind of loosened it a little bit. And then there's another one right here. And that one's actually going to be 10 millimeters. And there's two, so there's one on the top that's gonna to be 10 millimeters. Plan for removing these is just gonna be simply disconnecting the connector for the ignition coil here. Fairly basic. Removing this screw. Sorry, my finger's in the way. In the back, which is going to be uh, 5 sixteenths. And that's going to be the same for all of them, all to the back. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. So that'll be one, there'll be another. And just go all the way back. I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna take one out and then kind of show you how to remove one, and then just start removing all of them. And if I have a problem with one further in the back, I'll kind of show you how I did it, just because of the access. So there's the screw. I've already disconnected the electrical connectors. So here's the ignition coil I'll also be replacing. So I got the first one loose here. That's kind of what it looks like. pretty bad. It's been over four years since it's been replaced. So my specific um, gapping on my spark plug is going to be 0.052 to 0.056. One thing you can do if they don't come pre-gapped, something pretty basic. This is all I use. This is all I use to um, get my spark plugs. Just make sure you check your owner's manual before you um, gap your, your new plugs.
Now I'm just going to be working my way down, unplugging the ignition coils and removing them as I go. Just popped off the EVAP um, hose here. That just gets pushed in down. There's a rubber seal. So I popped that out. Went down, a lot, down the line here, as you can see, and removed all the connections. I have three of the ignition coils out, and I have two more on this side. Here are the ignition coils. And I'll show you what I did in the front to be able to remove the, um, the screw for the ignition coil in the front. So it's kind of hard to see with the bad lighting. The sun's quite bright right now, but this is the front portion. And there's two more plugs directly under here. So, and this is kind of, there's a bracket here. So I'm just removing this bolt, which is 5 eighths. I just loosened it a little bit. So hopefully this will give me a little bit more room to work with. hard to see, but now I can access the screw to the ignition coil there. So I was now able to get out the last two ignition coils through the front, which will be still the easiest way to do it after removing the bolt here, which holds this bracket and the electrical wiring. It's much easier to gain access to uh, the two ignition coils in the front. It's still hard to see because of the lighting, but it's a lot easier to get your hand back there. So now I started to work on the right hand side. I just started disconnecting the ignition coil plugs all the way down the line. The bracket's loose here, and I can already get access to the front front one. So I'm now completely finished with taking out all the coils on the left hand side. If you're looking at the engine from the front, I've now removed all of the plugs on the right hand side all the way to the back and I've already removed the two ignition coils in the front, which the front one's right here. So I was removing the last two, sorry, three, as you can see that they are removed. First two came out easy. And the last one, of course, after I removed all 10, this is what happens. So I was trying to just pull it out like the rest of them. And this is a good one. I removed it so you could see it. So this is sitting in the shaft that then connects to the spark plug. So probably won't get lucky enough to have you see it, but it's just um, sitting in there. So what I'm going to try and do is just take some long needle nose pliers and just pull it out. Shouldn't be too hard. I just wanted to show you since, of course, it happened to me on the very last plug. And so it came out. So now after removing all of the ignition coils, I am going to restart removing all of the spark plugs. I'm going to start with this one just because um, it's a little bit easier to see with removing the spark plug. 
So all I have is just a spark plug remover socket, long extension, and I've already loosened it just so I can do this with one hand with the camera. And I'll show you the steps I'm going to take with a spark plug as I do all of the rest. So when you're reinstalling them, after you've made sure that the gapping is correct, just make sure that you're torquing it down to also the specified torque, uh, which I'll be doing. Just check your owner's manual. It's typically in your owner's manual or will be online. You don't want to over tighten them because it can then break the spark plug into your, um, break it off into your engine. So um, I got most of the plugs in right now and I'm just going to show you the steps I'm going to take to um, replace the ignition coils. Um, this is just a new one. I'm going to be replacing all 10 of them and I'm going to be using some dielectric, um, dielectric grease. So I'm now going to be putting in my first uh, brand new ignition coil. I got my dielectric grease on just the end. Let's see if I can get a clear shot of um, the hole for the spark plug. There it is. Very basic. I'm just going to show you the one and then start doing the rest of them. Just because it's much harder to do with one hand. So, once it's on, making sure that the holes align, pushing it down, you can kind of feel it sit down into place. The electric grease helps with that a little bit. So it's all the way seated. Now I'm just going to take my the one screw and then secure it. Again, sorry about the lighting. And I'm just going to start working my way all the way back and then doing the opposite side and I'll show you the sequence for making sure everything goes back together properly. So I have now changed out all 10 ignition coils, as you can see three pretty well there. There's one brand new, two, and then you can see as they go further back. I'll also show you the front, but is what I'm going to be doing now is just replugging back in all the ignition coils as well as the connections for the fuel lines. So like I said, there's all the bad ignition coils. I have reconnected all the electrical connections as you can see here 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 and I just fold it all the way down the line they're all labeled so it's pretty hard to mess it up I've already started on this side these are all connected I've replaced the bolt that goes here so I just got done replacing this bolt I just cinched it down as well as replacing this bolt which is 5 8 I already tightened that and this bolt back here I retightened which is 13 millimeters and then the bolt that goes on top of it this is the arm that supports 
transmission fluid line. The air hose um, is going to be connecting the box, which is going to be the screw that's back here. And I'll show you that. So I just got this attached. There's only one screw that's in the back. Like I had mentioned, it's right where my uh, fingers all the way in the back. Tighten that up. I'm now going to be adding this hose to here. And then I'm going to be putting a new air filter, which goes in here. And I've actually found that it's much easier if you install the air filter prior to putting this on. It just makes it a lot easier. One time I've done it in the past. So I've now got everything back in place. Got my screws tight here. This is locked in. I got my electrical wiring attached there. This is seated properly. I got my screws in here. I now have everything reconnected. Let's see if you can get it good. You can see all the plugs in line as well as the opposite side. I've reattached that as well as the electrical wiring here. And you can kind of see down the row there and got all the new ignition coils and all the plugs reconnected. The last thing for me to do is just replace the housing that goes over the engine and start it back up. So I now reinstalled the housing that covers up the engine. That was just the last step on putting everything back together. Uh, now it's kind of the moment of truth for uh, I'll go ahead and fire it up. So it sounds much better than it did before. Um, I did all this for about a hundred bucks uh, for the air filter, spark plugs, and ignition coils. I called two different shops and one quoted me a thousand, the other one was about twelve hundred dollars. Um, so I thought I'd just post this video, um, help, some, help you guys out. I wasn't able to find these steps um, on a video online, so if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it.